culture. It's like, wow, there's a line. All I have to do is follow it and I'll find a fantastic lizard. When I'm on a, on a track, I'm just single-minded. Let's come up here and see if we can... There's what it was there. When you learn how to track, not only do you, do you read the sand, but you, you become the lizard yourself if you're a good tracker and you see the direction it's going and, and then that makes it easier because you can circle around in a big arc and find the track quicker. But given the sand monitor's stamina, even a fresh trail can stretch for miles. Right here, you can see the classic Gouldy eye track. Yeah. They, when they lash their tails, they lift it off the ground, and it's not continuous. Like While the hide-and-seek continues at Red Sands, up in Australia's tropical north, lizard kings leave hardly any tracks behind. This rocky landscape is home to a number of very different creatures, like the Kimberley Rock Monitor. It's a master climber, quick as a wink and constantly on the lookout for anything small enough to grab. The key to the monitor's remarkable survival story is the one plan fits all body design, which has changed little from the time of the dinosaurs. All monitors can run, climb, dig, and swim. The Merton's monitor even has valves in its nose that shut tight when swimming underwater. But apart from size, monitor species don't differ very much. And they're all armed with the same senses. During the dry season, Merton's forage for crabs, crayfish, and frogs in widely scattered permanent pools. But they inevitably cross paths with their neighbors and they're not about to share the spoils freely. Rivals are not tolerated, and much head-bobbing accompanies a standoff. It's part of monitor etiquette, a warning to back off or get bitten. Mertens are skilled hunters, on land and in the water. Just like other monitors, to find food, they flick their forked tongue, except that Mertens pick up scents underwater as well. They're surprisingly good fishermen. It's a skill spotted by other predators. Why try to catch fish when you can steal one? A lizard king is not so easily outwitted. Survival out here means staying at least one step ahead. Ah, there. Steven, bring the ax and the shovel up here. I've got a ghoul eye in a burrow. It's a big one. Got it. Back at Red Sands, Eric's found the hideout of his lizard thief. Now, right in that he has to get him out. So what I'm gonna do, first is look for the pothole. Uh -huh. The pop hole where it'll jump out. And that most likely will be 
over about here. Okay. Monitors are a class vanishing act. They disappear from view in an instant. And they build their homes to confuse other predators. And of course, lizard hunters. <laughs> the main burrow stretches for many yards underground. And it has emergency exits or potholes, dead end corners and decoy tunnels. And so Eric and Stephen have to feel their way through the labyrinth of shafts. Uh, this I gotta get my head down this hole. Eric has to be careful. There could be all kinds of venomous creatures down there. Oh, man. This is a bad one. Two hours of digging, and they can almost smell their quarry. Does this kind of look like a... Opening? Yeah, it does. Maybe that's a pop hole. Here, let me just skip it a little. You can still see his tail. Yep. Okay. I told you he was in there. <laughs> I told you it was gonna try to come out of a pop hole. Uh, <laughs> this one is <laughs> this one is powerful, man. You wanna hold him? It's very strong. Watch out. It's really don't let him go. Whatever you do, hang on to that lizard for dear <laughs> life. The sand monitor is a prize catch, but Eric wasn't the first to get him. Something must bit him on the tail, something big. I think it was grabbed by a parenti like that and just barely escaped. Well, let's go back to the truck. This lizard king is about to make history. Soon, he'll be carrying Red Sand's first lizard cam. He's big enough to carry a transmitter. I think Christian and Lucas are gonna like this. While Lizard Cam reveals the monitor's tactics in the wild, at the University of Tennessee, biopsychologist Dr. Gordon Burghardt is investigating their intelligence in the lab. Now, the term intelligence, of course, is a complex term because what is intelligence? We can't define that for people. It's best for us to think about this in terms of various tasks or problems an animal has to solve and how good they're able to do it. Checkmate to the Lizard King might be premature. So Dr. Burghardt's team has begun with something simpler, a test to see whether monitors can discriminate between different objects. His animals are African species, and in previous tests, these monitors have already shown they can count up to six. They were trained to leave a feeding area only after they had found six hidden snails, a remarkable performance for a lizard. Our animals are really quite laid back. They're used to people. Uh, they are used to being handled. They get a lot of tender, loving care. When they get into environments, they get involved in it right away, rather than being like going to a doctor's office with a young kid. You know, uh, I don't want to go there again. Uh, that doesn't happen with our animals. Like the Komodo at London Zoo, Milo is trained to respond to a target to get a reward. Hey, get it. Girl. Hey, oh, that away. All of Dr. Burghardt's monitors take to the training easily. Okay, let's see if you can get another target here. After we found that uh, the animals really learned the targeting adequately, we decided, okay, without our presence, without our moving of the object, which is what we were always doing, would they be able to recognize and discriminate it from a similar object that differed in some characteristic? And so we began with the easiest discrimination, black and white. Now the monitors face two new challenges. First, they can't see their trainers and nothing in the arena moves. So there are no obvious cues as to what to do. Will they remember? Looking on the left wall, going straight down. Second, they can see two balls, the black one they know and a new white one. Will they tell the colors apart? They master the task surprisingly quickly. What we do find is that the animals learn quite rapidly. Uh, within 20 trials, our animals were reliably choosing the right target. And what we find that's amazing and 
is not true of most reptiles, that they don't seem to care that much about the environment being simplified.